visiting with Gavin today. He's an artist and sculptor. And so, Gavin, you have an interesting name for your business, and what is it? It's uh, Piff to Bark. And what is the meaning behind that? Um, I just, it's the parts of a tree, so the center of the tree and then the, the outside of the tree, the bark. Um, and I try to utilize reclaimed wood, so um, it's using all parts of a tree, essentially, for the sculptures that I make. So really you've taken that artistic um, view and your talents to really an interesting way. So tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so my background in sculpture and as an artist I really try to make things to get people to notice. And um, I have a, a large passion for nature um, and the natural environments. Um, and the pollinators are, are huge, important aspects to life. Um, and in order to kind of spread my love for pollinators, I started creating uh, these mason and bee homes. Um, and I create them in a way that draws people in. They, they look at the pollinator box and they say, what is that? <laughs> and um, then that starts to create a conversation and opens their mind to, to the mason bee and other pollinators that are around us. Ah, that is interesting because I, I think of an artist, I think of you at a, as a, a museum or a sculpture garden, but you've taken that talent and, and brought it to our natural world, which is an interesting connection there. Yeah. And so on these boxes, um, solitary bees, they don't have a hive. They're not really social that way. So right. it's interesting the way you have made them that it's like a little um, condo or a hotel. Sure, sure, yeah, yeah. Definitely drawing upon architectural elements and um, using my just kind of general aesthetic appreciations for wood textures and um, different grains. It's interesting that you've designed this with the trays that come out um, for the bees to lay their um, eggs for the next generation. So why did you do it this way? So it's really important to be able to rotate the nesting sites out each season because disease could spread or, um, you know, the, the trays could get occupied by their insects. So having a clean nesting site each season is very important. A lot of the pollinator boxes you'll, you'll find out there are kind of one-offs. They're just holes drilled into wood um, and there's no way to clean them out. So being able to, to really have a nice fresh nesting site is, is very important. It sounds like you've done a lot of research on this. It's not just like, oh, I decided to drill some holes and put this together. So really you've looked into the science of it. Yeah, yeah, I'm just trying to make the most functional box possible um, while also trying to make them artistically interesting. Um, and it's really important for me to be able to make habitats that are going to be beneficial for the mason bee. Not that, not, it's not going to you know, be detrimental because that's, that's ultimately what we're trying to do is to help the pollinator find, find a nesting site. And Gavin, these are beautiful, but people in Salem can see one of the larger um, kind of uh, house that you did for Capital Subaru. Yeah, yeah, I did a uh, commission for Capital Subaru, a bigger um, sculptural mason bee home. It's about uh, four feet tall, and um, it has a lot of the same elements using kind of the collage um, wood texture aesthetic, and it houses um, mainly the mason bee as well. It has, it has holes throughout the sculpture um, for mason bees to, to lay their eggs in. Yeah, we visited it not too long ago and it was really fantastic to see. And so moving on from bees, you've gone to um, birds and bees. So here's a birdhouse that you've done and that is just lovely. Yeah, yeah, I'm kind of drawing upon the same kind of ideas with the mason bee homes, trying to create something aesthetically pleasing um, to draw people in and have it built very sculpturally. It is, it's got so many um, just little artistic elements to it and just all different textures of wood. There's driftwood. Um, it's just really nice. And I noticed that this is probably for a certain bird, isn't it? Yeah, the chickadee. Yeah, I'm trying to find bird species that are at risk in particular areas. So this particular home is going to a person in Corvallis and the chickadee is at risk. Their habitats are at risk. So um, they're promoting birdhouses to be made for them oh. and that's built to the specs of what that particular bird is looking for in a home. Ah, oh, that's interesting. And so where can we go to um, possibly find where you're going to be an event or to purchase some? Yeah, I have a website, pithtobark.com and you can buy my pollinator boxes there. The birdhouses aren't currently for sale, 
but I do take commissions, and um, you can contact me through my website as well. Oh, that is nice. So it really is that they're beautiful boxes, pollinator boxes, and maybe in the future some more birdhouses. So please go to gardentime.tv. You can find the link to Gavin's and really kind of help our pollinators out there with getting pollinator boxes for your garden. Thanks so much, Gavin. Of course. Thank you. Thank you.